Hello, and welcome back to another Lower Decks trailer analysis. Well, I was gonna make a joke that was a Strange New Worlds trailer analysis, given the announcement of the crossover in Strange New Worlds. However, I that would probably have confused people. Where today, obviously, we are analyzing the Lower Decks Season 3 trailer that I'm absolutely certain I'm gonna have regret watched <laughs> because I love the show and things are just better when you don't know what's coming. I've said this before, but hey, this is an occupational hazard, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, as always, I have not seen the trailer I am about to watch, this one that's probably on screen right now. I am going to watch it. You are gonna see highlighted clips of my reactions. Uh, because I, I can't show the whole trailer. It's linked in the description. I, I recommend you watch that first, then come back. And then I'm going to do a real deep dive into the trailer. And it's lower deck, so that probably means a real deep dive. I've, 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 I have enough time to do this, I'm pretty sure. But yes, this is quite a fun one for me. Because uh, the first season of Star Trek I ever reviewed on the channel was Lower Deck Season 2 when I did that, you know, episode by episode thing. So we're almost come full circle, if you ignore the fact the first thing I reviewed was actually a Prodigy trailer. But yes, the only thing I have seen, that was me hitting spacebar to start the trailer, uh, and instead stopping the recording of OBS. I should really map that off from state, but from space, but the only thing I have seen of this trailer is this Indiana Jones thing right here to check that it was the right trailer. Uh, but yes, shall we just get straight into the trailer? Discover the undiscovered country! I like that idea of like a work day. The greatest adventure of your life! Yeah! Was that Martok? Pretend we're in awe of the pylons. Oh my god, that's amazing. This is the sort of thing I don't want from the trailer. <laughs> but god, that's amazing. Um. Just keep circling. <laughs> god, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I didn't chew a lot of my reactions to the little references, because god, there's going to be a lot. I, I noticed, first thing, they... Actually, they showed Freeman on the bridge for Deep Space Nine, uh, but most of it didn't have Freeman on the Cerritos. Uh, I've said before, what I think... Uh, what First off, I kind of think Lower Decks would do this, but what I also hope they do is um, the first episode of, of this, of, of Season 3, is like the Lower Deckers, a big elaborate plan to rescue freeman right you know hijinks hijinks and sh ensue it, it's all that stuff you know they're rescuing freeman it's exactly what we s uh, suspect and then they like burst into the prison cell or whatever like at the end to rescue you who are out and it's like a bunch of admirals and stuff apologizing and releasing her because the federation justice system just found she was innocent because she hasn't done anything wrong and they let her go like that is the end that no that's the beginning i want like that's the setup after all the weight the comparisons of best of both worlds you know that way I, th I think that's the true lower decks uh resolution of this but we saw a lot of freeman in prison stuff <laughs> actually wait was she like, locked in with kittens at one point. I was a bit confused, but is that, like, the Federation's liberal, like, nice uh, justice system? A few things I noticed as well. Uh, and of course, I knew Deep Space Time was going to be in it, by the way. That's why I didn't react too much. Uh, it's the image I knew that told me that this trailer was out was this Deep Space Nine on the Cerritos view screen. Uh, but a lot of Deep Space Nine references. You had Cisco's. Um, I saw some... Uh, Deep Space Nine-esque uniforms, uh, not Starfleet uniforms, but like casual uniforms. Uh, Martok, which I'm pretty sure that was Martok. I'd have to hear the voice again, but he, he's been in Lower Decks before. Not Martok, but the voice actor. I think he was the Klingon when like they played the music too loudly in the cold open. I'm pretty sure that was Martok. He might have had a few other roles. Martok's actor, whose name escapes me right now. But it made me wonder, if you went back, like... Season one, I remember I had the Gary Mitchell reference. Like, did was that the one with the TAS reference? Are they kind of going show by so? Did season one have a lot of TOS references? Season two, a lot of TNG references. Now they're on a Deep Space Nine, and season four is going to be Voyager. Like, there was the, I saw the Delta Flyer distinctly in here, but um, that's 
interesting. Doctor Who did something similar. Actually, the the reboot, um, not reboot, the continuation modern series of Doctor Who. Season one focused on the enemies of the first Doctor. Season two, the enemies of like the second Doctor uh, and like so on and so forth. Uh, up until four. I don't think they did it after season four. Yeah. L- shall we get into all the little nitty gritty details of uh, <laughs> of this season? India Jones, I, if you haven't noticed, by the way, it's like a Klingon idol, which is amazing. I was not expecting Expecting Indiana Jones and Lower Decks, but hey, let's see what else we got. Uh, here, this was the one that kind of reminded me. That that's something you'd see in Deep Space Nine. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's an actual uniform, maybe one of Quark's undershirts. I've been thinking about how many people we can see on Deep Space Nine. All, all of them, basically. Not not Avery Brooks. Um, he might have. I'm just not aware. But like, basically, all the main cast have ever been like, yeah, they'd love to do a cameo. On uh, Star Trek, Odo was going to in Prodigy, like the actual Rene French, <laughs> his last name, um, was going to, but then he died before they could record his lines for, of course, the Prodigy episode with Odo. Um, but I'm like, you could get Quark still in here. Quark would be fun. Like Garrick, I was wondering, but I don't know why he'd still be on Deep Space Nine. I guess he could be visiting, whatever. Uh, Kira, you know, you, you could get basically everyone. Ezri could be fun. Bashir. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I'm still just kind of a bunch of casual wear. No, 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 that's it. Okay, no, that's the scene right there where they're running into Freeman's prison cell and they're like, yeah, we're going to fight. And then, wait, you can see Tendi as well. What's she doing? Some some mind gain? Is she going to be like, (gasps) because they're just letting Freeman go because she's innocent and like, this is the Federation. Like, what the heck? We, We make mistakes sometimes, but like, Hey, we, you know, we have a trial system. This isn't Cardassia. Like, that's the jokes I'm expecting. That That's what I'd really love. And we're back on, um, I don't actually remember the name of this planet, but it's the second episode planet for, like, Career Day, which is an amazing, amazing uh, concept for an episode. It's just a career day for, like, they have to go. God, I, I mean, that's, a, that's such a, like, I've done some stuff like that. I was in Knowledge Bowl at high school, and I, we ran, like, a little Knowledge Bowl booth, but, I, God, that, I, I hope it's something like that, because not many people come to the Knowledge Bowl booth, but, like, I, it's, it's like some weird nerdy subset of the career day. The Federation News Network thing is weird. Picard had this, and it always felt kind of weird that they had, like, a very modern style news thing um when you know there's the federation news network was in classic trek but it was like jake sisko was kind of writing stuff i don't think they ever had broadcasts but knights is it with a k eclipse london kings oh and kings in game of one in game one of elds i don't know that one is that the got water polo was that what um What's his face Arch was into? Six year old Zacto, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yulon, Romulan? Romulan, I'm gonna go with. Sisters from, ac- from active duty starships. Okay, yeah, that's the end of a sentence. Buffalo Solar Knights, Eclipse. Oh, that's the same one again. Um, yes, I'm sure I'm gonna have fun reading that in the episode. Why is this major news actually thinking about? Oh my god, look at all the- Thank you! Okay, this is something I complain about in The Next Generation, where if you go and pay attention, whenever there's like a security disaster, whatever, they need like guards to escort, or guards because they're gonna transport someone dangerous, right? And they're like, Picard's like, I need a security team to what, whatever, blah, blah, blah. The security team is always two guys and maybe Worf. Right? Now, if it's a real bad situation, sometimes it'll be four guys and maybe Worf. But, like, it doesn't matter the situation. You found, like, some alien who can shapeshift to whatever they want? Two guys. You found, like, a Q? Q is on board? Like, basically, God is on board? Two guys. Like, it, what, what is happening on the Enterprise that that requires like why isn't it hey i need a security team there's like an incredible existential threat give me everybody your security this is the federation flagship what the heck are you doing like you're just sitting around in your quarters all day um this is that because this is like an abundance of security people yep so we're back on cisco's and again i love that everyone's in kind of deep space nine-esque uniforms here um 
because it's Cisco's. I wonder if we'll get Jake then. Jake, Jake feels like the kind of person they'd bring back. Because Prodigy, uh, just thinking real quick, they've never really brought back, like, huge people. Like, real big, big people. They've brought, like, Tom Paris, who's like, yeah, he's a major character of Voyager, but he's also, he's just kind of like the, the pilot. He, he's not the same as, like, Picard. Um, or even, like, Janeway, or, like, the huge characters. They kind of like, they're the lower deckers, is what they're going. Like, they're still important. I, I Don't get me wrong, I love Tom. I own that plate. I think, I don't know if you can see it somewhere back there. But, um, Jake Sisko feels like the kind of guy they'd bring back for, uh, Deep Space Nine. You know, it's a, it was a kid who's now older. I mean, I think he was an adult by the end of Deep Space Nine. Uh, but yeah, that would be a fun one. And look, it's the Federation News Network. Like, why isn't Jake Sisko presenting this? That would have been amazing. Uh, God, they. I hope they at least approach the guy. Uh, Krorik Lofton? Thinking about it, actually, I'm not sure if he still acts. I can't remember. I've looked him up before. Um, but yeah, then we have uh, anyone. No, no familiar faces. I think this lady, this old lady down here, kind of looks familiar, but I think she's just a common background character. Wait. <laughs> Ketracel White Hot. Oh god, I bet that's a reference to what the Jem'Hadar say, but I don't remember. Victory and Death? I can't remember. But yeah, Ketracel White Hot Sauce. No, Ketracel White Hot. I assume it's not hot sauce made of Ketracel White. That is interesting. Um, Lower Deck's, of course, never really the one to go into the aftermaths of, um, well, the uh, the next generation Deep Space Nine Voyager block, but maybe we can take that as Odo succeeded and the Dominion is now peaceful, trading, trading Ketracel White, which turns out is an amazing hot sauce. God, the strip Cerritos is amazing, and we were, were robbed, Eagle Moss. <laughs> like, come on, we, we're never gonna get a strip Cerritos anymore. Uh, yeah, but beautiful, beautiful model. I also can't remember why they stripped the Cerritos. Um in the end of season two, but I, I remember that they did it. <laughs> Wait, hang on, is that down there? Oh, uh, they're a bunch of space elevators, I guess. It looks like Earth, but what is what is up with that? Because they're the Kelvin things that, um, I, well, you'll see it. Oh, no, no, here we go, is that Martok? So begins the greatest adventure of your life. Oh yeah, eye patch and all, that's Martok, <laughs> yeah. Because fun to have him back. Wait, what is this? Is this the career day one again, maybe? Like, they're gonna do Klingons, or it's like an exchange thing? I don't know. Hey, Martok's gonna be fun, though. There we go, the Delta Flyers. So I wonder... Like, maybe they made more Delta Flyers? Uh, like, at the class, or whatever? But is this the actual Delta Flyer? Oh, hang on. No, this is a race. But what's that down there, at the bottom of the screen? That's not Voyager. I can't quite tell. If I got all my models, checked it, it's vaguely reminiscent of the Protostar, actually, but it's probably some new weird Lower Decks class. Oh no, here we go. Oh, that's a... That's familiar, but I know it's a new class. It, it vaguely reminds me of a lot of stuff. Um, I don't see the Delta Flyer written on this, but I don't know. It's interesting. We might get more Voyager. Modern Star Trek is a big fan of referencing Voyager. I don't know if you've noticed, but from, uh, not the beginning, because Discovery obviously couldn't reference Voyager, but from Picard, and like every series that's at, taking place after Voyager, it seems to be the show that they want to reference the most. I guess it's not the big popularity of Deep Space, of Next Generation, and Deep Space Nine, they're, they're starting to reference it now, but I guess it was, maybe they still kind of saw it as the black sheep, the producers, but Voyager, I guess was kind of the obscure one they could throw references at, um, but modern Star Trek loves referencing Voyager. Not that I'm complaining, it's just a weirdly high proportion of Voyager references. Whose nightmare, is it Boimler? Klingon clowns, I bet that's Boimler's nightmare. Is this a race of people who, like the pack leads were with hats, just like worship abs or something? The person with the best abs is in charge? Because, you know, he rips off his shirt, you look in the background, they're all shirtless. And then these people are very shirtless. The baby shirtless, but I mean, it's a baby. <laughs> I don't know, that'd be interesting. Wait, what's going on up there? 
Yeah, here we go. Federation Rehabilitation is like adorable puppies. There's like a bunny, but she's just like going mad or something. <laughs> is she allergic? Oh, is that the thing? It's Federation Rehabilitation, but maybe she's got like an allergy to fur or something. That's a. I love Lower Decks. It's just. Uh, uh, William Shatner, there's his name, recently said at the Comic-Con that this trailer was announced at, that Gene Roddenberry would be turning in his grave if he could see the modern Star Treks. Like, he would have hated all of them, essentially. Those weren't his exact words. Well, turning in his grave were his exact words. Uh, he's absolutely right. He's 100% right. And anyone who thinks otherwise is either misinformed or just ignorant about Gene Roddenberry's ideals. But, uh, like... Gene Roddenberry was wrong about the vast majority of things in Star Trek. Like, Gene Roddenberry is what makes Star Trek Star Trek. He brought the ideals, he brought the philosophy, and those are critical. And basically, he was wrong about everything else. Everything, all the great elements of Star Trek in his lifetime, he hated. He tried to get in the way of. Even TOS in the first two seasons, we, he still had, like, great control. It was really you know, passionate about it, didn't follow Gene Roddenberry's ideals. He would have hated Deep Space Nine. Like, Lower Decks nails Star Trek. Like, everything about Star Trek, it does it perfectly. And the stuff like this, it knows its tone. Um, it's, it, Mike McMahon said that he wanted Lower Decks to be two guys sitting on a couch after the episode that they just watch. And one of them was like, God, that was hilarious. That was an amazing comedy. And the other guy looks back, looks at their friend or whatever, and is like, yes, but that was also an exceptional episode of Star Trek. And th that's what Lower Decks is. Rudenberry would absolutely hate it. I'm sh I have no doubt. He'd hate how they're behaving. He'd, he'd hate how all the officers are behaving, how unprofessional they are. But Lower Decks just nails Star Trek and it knows Star Trek and it knows Star Trek so much better than most fans. It's just it's stuff like this. It's just amazing. Oh, what the heck is that? Wait, is that chainsaw? Why is that chainsaw like a gun? <laughs> Here we go. This is the bit I was talking earlier. The space elf, you know, the Kelvin thing from 2009 that destroyed Vulcan and they tried to destroy Earth. It's this scene from from 2009. Whatever happens, we're going to be right beside you. Did I mention as well, it's just got great character moments and characters that we adore. And look at Tindy over there being so cute. I noticed that earlier. Wait, why are Tindy and Mariner in their under... Because they use their uniforms to go down and grab Boimler. <laughs> By the hair, it looks like. Oh, I miss the Dideridax. So hang on. This race between... Uh, that, some sort of Phoenix Enterprise E yacht hybrid thing in the Delta Flyer goes through what, Romulan space? Ah. Uh, Lower Decks get Star Trek icon icon iconography too. There's the word. Okay, wait, I just got that reference. Not sure who the green guy is in the background. He doesn't quite look Orion. But is this a masks reference? <laughs> Masks is an episode I actually really like. Uh, I really like Masks. It was written by a guy who did exactly one other episode of Star Trek. Uh, I think. I might be wrong. Uh, did he do Darmok as well? He, he has a lot of the weird concept episodes that like no one really quite understood when making it. And then in the end, it either really worked or it really was just kind of weird. And I love Masks, but like other than maybe Darmok, I think this guy wrote one other script. Did he do Babel? Which I quite like as well. But but <laughs> one he did was the Deep Space Nine episode where they're kind of start reenacting some old civil war or whatever. And like the, the personalities of the people in this war overtake the, the people of the station. And I'm like, well, that's basically just masks, isn't it? It put me to, I just clicked that like masks in that episode, which I enjoyed, but it's not quite as good as masks. They're the same episode, just like slightly different. But uh, I loved masks. Like that's, that was a great episode. It was just, I loved how out there it was in the atmosphere of Mask. It's a it's a personal favorite of mine. So so again, I'm very much enjoying that Lower Decks is doing Mask. I wonder what the fan reaction will be because I know most people. I don't think Mask is like a hated episode, but just kind of seen as a weird one. But I'm definitely one of its admirers. Peanut Hamper as well, which is great. A uh, boy. Wait. Oh my god. <coughs> oh god, I'm dying. 
Re so many references uh, in one. Oh god, I'm dying. So there's one where the Boimler's just doing a bunch of drugs, I guess. Uh, peanut hamper in some sort of warp field, which everyone loves peanut hamper. But then we have the Mayan Aztec, I can't remember which one, god. Um, which, yes, just further reaffirming the incredible tasks that, you know, most of us might be aware, unless you've forgotten, that the Greek gods are in fact canonical in Star Trek. Uh, so are the Aztec or Mayan gods. I don't remember which one, uh, but <laughs> yeah, I don't remember, but a TAS episode, another good one. Also appearing to take place in Steven Universe's kindergarten, uh, so who knew? I don't know who this crew member is, I'm pretty sure we've never seen them before, but also in my face blindness, I am not unaware that this is kind of how I would imagine a grown-up Jake Sisko would look like in the Lower Deck style. But also, not being in Starfleet was a pretty core <laughs> core character trait of Sisko. What is this uniform Rutherford's wearing? It's a weird one, not quite Deep Space Nine. It almost gives me Section 31 vibes, but uh, I'm not sure. That's a... It's, it's a weird... I think it's a variant of the Deep Space Nine one. But judging by the com badge and stuff as well, and it looks like Boimler's wearing one too, which is interesting. Cetacean Ops, which is... I, F, everyone loves Cetacean Ops. What's, isn't there something we haven't seen yet? It was, I think it was Ambu Jitsu. It was Ambu Jitsu and Cetacean Ops were what um, they really wanted to put in the show. I can't quite recall anything else, though. You've got some sort of Andorian furry. Uh, is, oh, I, is that like an Andorian werewolf? Why does it- wait. Why, why does it have a fedora? Is that a Borg snake? I don't know what the raisin monster is, but I love how basically everyone's fear is like some amalgamation of a Star Trek thing and then just like a standard fear. You got clowns. I guess jazz clowns? Is that Boimler? What did Riker do to Boimler on the Titan? Um, it's You've got a werewolf but it's an Andorian. Is that how Mariner sees her new girlfriend? Uh, you've got a snake, but it's been assimilated by the Borg. I like that idea. I like the idea of animals being assimilated by a Borg, the Borg. I think Lower Decks is the only one that could pull it off because it doesn't that doesn't quite make sense with the Borg's, like, per perfectionism. You know, the, the whole point of assimilation is it adds to perfection. It brings the Borg close to perfection in their eyes. But I like the idea of the Borg kind of experimenting with assimilating animals. And then the raisin monster. That's there, too. I think that might be the joke. Why are there basketballs? What is this scene? Wait, is that a... Does the Borg snake eat the barf basketballs <laughs> lower decks everybody lower decks can i get this as a i'll tell you what i'm just gonna get the photo now because that is the thumbnail god this joke pretend we're in awe of the pylons <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> this is the best thing that star trek's ever done uh, <laughs> God, it's Lower Decks. It's amazing. That was an exceptional trailer as well, and that it didn't really say much. It just gave some, like, scenes, some kind of, maybe some visual gags. Um, I guess we know Freeman at some point gets back in Command of the Cerritos, but that's like saying that Janeway makes it back home. You know, that's not, it's like a spoiler, but not really. Much better than season twos that actually kind of showed Boimler on the Cerritos in a Lower Decks uniform a lot. Um, just kind of saying that he leaves the Titan pretty early on. This one, you know, Freeman could be back episode one, like I say. should be. She could be gone for a while. Yeah, that was a great trailer. Again, it would have been amazing to get some of those uh, gags in person, like the Deep Space Nine appreciation, which is it? It's a real long. Is it like two minutes forty? I think it, the Deep Space Nine intro is actually the shortest intro 
Um, but the the point is, they're all like incredibly close time wise. It's just Deep Space Nine has kind of the least going on, um, so it feels the longest to a lot of people. It's just that that's what makes Lower Decks great, isn't it? It's the appreciation of the Star Trek. It's the Deep Space Nine. It's doing. It's kind of comical because you don't expect it, but it's still just a great Deep Space Nine. You know, we we do. It's an appreciate Deep Space Nine. It's a homage to the intro, but you also have the same element of like. Yes, we do this a lot, and like it's a common complaint that they can be kind of slow or dull. I uh, just this starship porn, whatever the starship appreciation. They they did it, um, in the movie one, the, the beautiful. They, they, that was the best one of season one, wasn't it? Um, was the movie episode like the Titan thing was incredible, but that the one where they just made a movie was just amazing. It, like it's just they keep circling, just yeah, I know it's dull, whatever, but like w- the juxtaposition of the audience and the crew and it's it's lower decks has always nailed the laughing now how does they put it because they don't say laughing with not laughing at it's it's a it's just a general revel in enjoyment and acceptance of what on the surface can be kind of absurdity in star trek like you have the gods that are canon and kind of absurd stuff happens that's just taken very seriously and lower decks is very much the acknowledgement of how kind of ridiculous it can be while still fitting within that world and still creating enjoyment and homages and appreciation of star trek and it's God, it's it's an impossible, a nearly impossible thing to nail. Like, consistently, it's exceptional that they've done it. And yeah, Lower Decks has had some dud moments, some dud character beats. They have had an episode I didn't like, the Mugatu Gumato. You know, some episodes have been better than others, but that core aspect, like, they've they've never insulted Star Trek, which I, I don't, off the top of my head, I can't say that Prodigy has insulted Star Trek, but that's not something I think the other series can say to me is they've just every other series, even Prodigy to an extent with how many alpha beta quadrant species are so far um, near that Delta quadrant where we know where they are in the galaxy. It's kind of a spoiler, but it's a place most of these species, no one would have thought they'd be yet. You know, they, they have arguments for it, but it's lower decks doesn't have anything like that. I it's, I could maybe go back and think of some examples if I really tried, but it's just, it's just the good Star Trek. It's an exceptional comedy, and it is an exceptional episode of Star Trek. I'm very much looking forward to it on the 25th, and presumably Prodigy afterwards, but, you know, we're, we're getting into the good stuff. You know, I'm enjoying uh, Discovery and Strange New Worlds now, the newer seasons, but the animated shows have been where it's at since Lower Decks came out. I, it's, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's amazing. And I'm very much looking forward to it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.